COVID definitely has been very trying for all of us. While some of us wish we were superheroes, we're not. In Ngting Fong General Hospital, a COVID-19 patient has just been moved to the ICU ward. She has had a uh, COVID infection uh, um, for more than a week, more than 10 days already. And her condition suddenly deteriorated acutely uh, over the last one, two hours where she needed very high amounts of oxygen. We quickly assessed her and we decided that uh, she would really need a higher level of care. So we informed our ICU colleagues. 20 months into the pandemic, Singapore is facing an unprecedented surge of COVID-19 cases, placing tremendous stress on hospitals and healthcare workers. If I would say there was one word to describe it, the situation in the ICU most likely would be tense. It's very uh, hectic. And currently it's, it's been very difficult both for the patients as well as for those who are trying to help them through this difficult period. Some of the things that some of my colleagues and myself have been done is to try and bolster each other's confidence and you know to help ourselves through this period along with trying to cheer our patients up along the way. Um, I think it's been difficult on the patients as well as their families. There have been a growing increasing number of ICU cases as well. Um, myself and my colleagues have been working very hard round the clock to be able to help these patients through this difficult period. It's, it's quite a trying time for everyone, let's put it that way. Down in the emergency department, the first stop for individuals seeking help at hospitals, operations are greatly stretched. To enable proper segregation of infective and non-infective patients, the ED is split into two zones, a clean zone for non-COVID-related emergencies and the fever facility for patients who are COVID-positive or have COVID-19 symptoms. There are days uh, when there are a lot of uh, patients waiting for inpatient beds. Um, because uh, the patient upstairs cannot be discharged because there are no place in the CCF and the nursing homes and the community hospital to take them home. So it affects our admission. So there are a lot of patients who waited very long for admission up to 48 hours. Our doctors and nurses have to look after these patients as well on top of the new patients who are coming in. So it's a one-way traffic uh, influx because it's extremely high, so the number of nurses to patient ratio is uh, it's tough la, for us because uh, we have to meet the demands of more patients right now, so it's very overwhelming for us. It's also mentally and physically challenging because uh, it's tiring every single day. Yeah. We can take 80 patients inside here, uh, that's the maximum. That means all the corridors are occupied, all empty spaces are occupied. Um, but we expanded the fever tent. It's a matter of uh, staffing. We don't have enough staff, even if we have the space. This area is the triaging area where ambulances will bring in cases. Last week was when we had a lot more patients who's waiting for the isolation facilities. So we have to find a space to, to, to uh, house them. I suppose sometimes it is quite stressful as well because if the hospital is full, we will be the holding area. If the isolation facility is full, we will be the holding area. If patients have no idea what to do, they will call for the ambulance and we have to attend to them. So we never turn away patients. The problem is that we are sort of like a safety net for patients who don't know what to do and if there are no beds or if there are any issues in society. This is our fever tent. Uh, it's a structure that was actually put up in place for us to deal with the initial COVID surge and of course it has remained in place for the past uh, coming two years uh, given that we are seeing the second surge of COVID cases in Singapore again. Very significantly, we've got a lot of people who are lodging. So lodgers uh, refer to patients who are waiting for a long time to go to a certain destination, whether it is to a bed upstairs in the inpatient wards or community isolation facility. And definitely this takes up a lot of uh, bed space. Uh, our department has, has, has had to cater to uh, accommodate a large number of people 
while also maintaining social distancing between the patients who are infected and those who are not infected. I think it's March, the COVID cases going up. Now we were, we're going to square one. It's like before. Now, it's, uh, we lack of uh, pandemic wards, but our hospital is trying to give wards lah, and trying to accommodate, uh, accommodate all. We try to manage and uh, we will give the best of uh, patient care we have here in Ang Teng Pong. Even though all our nurses, I know doctors from housekeeping, doctors and nurses are all tired, but we're trying our best to give all. So I hope uh, we will be appreciated, lah. that's all. As hospitals continue to face an increase of COVID-19 cases amidst these challenging circumstances, healthcare workers are supporting each other one day at a time. Looking at my colleagues, right, their determination, the hard work and effort that they put in every single day at work, it's actually very inspiring. Lah. So it keeps us all motivated and it keeps us going every single day when we come to work, when we see how hard each of us uh, put in our effort to work. I suppose it's what we do. If we don't do this job, then nobody else will do it, you see. So it's not glamorous, it's nothing like that, but um, it is what we are trained to do. If we don't do this job, if we abandon the post, then there's nobody else that can do this job. Yeah. The reality is that we do have family members. We have loved ones around, and oftentimes we have to see them go through this difficult period as well. And I think the one message I would like to say is that um, keep doing what you're doing, get vaccinated um, and to help us get through this difficult period together.